friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. I'm going to attempt to make a different kind of video that I've never made on this channel before. And I'll tell you the main reason I've never done this before and probably will never do it again. <laughs> this is going to be a video on safety, table saw safety specifically, but we may also go around to a couple of other tools and talk about some safety on them as well. Now the reason I've never done a safety video before is probably the very same reason I've never talked about politics or religion on the channel. It's because people have extremist views on all of those subjects. And when I say extremist, I mean you're either that way or you're that way and the two ends will never meet in the middle. I am not an extremist on anything. I believe in finding middle ground and understanding the whole thing and seeing the big picture rather than seeing I see this end of it or I see that end of it and that's all I see. Before we get too deep into this safety aspect of this video, I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you something that I know you already know but you may not be thinking about. You know, you can falsely believe that that safety helmet you have on is going to protect you, those glasses are going to protect you, those gloves are going to protect you, or all of the safety devices on the equipment itself is going to protect you. The safety switches, the safety guards, all that. You can believe that all you want to all day long and you can still get hurt. The biggest thing in the shop that affects safety is right between these two ears right here. That brain, that's what affects safety more than anything else, period. You can believe what you want, but I'm telling you black and white for sure, that's the biggest factor to safety. It's right between your ears. You have to put that to use and you have to think about every situation that you're about to get yourself into and you have to think it through ahead of time. In other words, you basically in your mind run through what you're about to do and think about all the ways that something could happen to hurt you. If you do that, you're already way safer than that safety helmet that you're wearing. That's my thought on it and I'm going to stick to that. I hope you do too. You should think about it every single time you do something in the shop, everything. I don't care what it is you're doing. If you're just sawing a little simple part on a bandsaw or you're running th something through a planer, it doesn't matter. You should think about safety and think about how could this thing get me? And things like to get you, trust me. My friend Jesse down in Texas was got by a board. It was a simple case of kickback on a table saw. And I say simple, nothing simple, but you understand my point. It just was what it was. A board kicked back, hit him in the hand, really nearly destroyed his hand. I'm going to show you a picture now. It is graphic and it is bloody. If you can't handle that, then I tell you to look away right now. Okay, you can look back now, and he lost a piece of bone out of this first joint, and he may still possibly have to have that first joint removed from his finger. The doctor says it is healing better than they expected it to heal, and so he's hopeful he's going to get to keep his whole finger, but he may not. You might say, well, he had to have gotten that caught in the saw blade. He did not. He never got near the saw blade. It didn't touch the blade at all. This safety video was brought about by request of someone who sent me an email last night, in fact, and said, uh, I would like for you to put out a video on this subject. You seem to know quite a bit about it. I gave him an email response and told him what I suspected happened. Now, I am telling you straight up and down, you know, I'm not pulling any punches. I'm not lying about anything. I'm just telling you straight up and down. I don't know exactly what happened. You know, I'm not trying to recreate his exact accident. I'm just going to show you some things that can happen on a table saw if you're not really, really careful. And they can ruin your whole day, trust me. So with that, you have two options. You can be one of those extremists that pick out every single thing I do and say wrong 
and you can just pick this whole video apart because I'm sure you can find fault. Or you can be one of those people that decides to listen and add this to your playbook and so that you don't end up in the same situation. Yeah, I know it sounds like I'm paranoid, but I've been through this. This ain't my first rodeo on YouTube. <laughs> So here we go. We're going over to the table saw and I'm going to show you some things that can really hurt you. We're at the table saw and the first thing all the safety extremists, I'm going to call them, because they're on that one extreme end and they can't see anything but that extreme end. They're going to say you don't have your guards in place and you are correct. I am not going to make any excuses for it. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I took them off to make this video more clear for you. That's what most table saw guys say on their videos. I re the guards have been removed for clarity, for visual purposes, etc. When in fact, most real experienced table saw guys can't handle those guards most of the time. I am not in any way, form, fashion telling you to remove your guards. I am not. I don't think you should remove your guards and especially unless you are very, very, very used to using a table saw. If you've got years and years of experience and you know what to expect and know how to handle it, then it's up to you whether you decide to remove your guards or not. I am not suggesting you take them off. Do you understand? I think you should leave them there. So, but I'm not going to be that guy that lies to you and tell you I removed them for clarity. Okay, having said all that, I'm going to try to tell you how this thing can eat your lunch in a heartbeat. And it can happen in a heartbeat. If it didn't happen in a heartbeat, you'd be able to get out of the way and it wouldn't be a problem. That's the problem. It happens so fast you cannot react. Here's my hypothesis of what happened to uh, Jesse. He was ripping a board like this. You see how I'm starting this rip here. I've already done this off camera. I'm not actually going to do this live on camera. I'm just showing you what he was doing. He was ripping a board like this down to make two boards out of it. And it was an especially hard wood. It was ebony. Ebony is about the most dense wood there is. It's about the hardest wood there is. I suspect that was your first factor is the fact of the heart of the hardness of that wood. The second factor probably, and this is just an assumption on my part, probably he wasn't using a brand new completely sharp blade. More than likely the blade had some use on it, which would be the case in almost any wood shop. This blade here has had quite a bit of use, so it would be very much in the same category. The combination of the super hard wood and the fact that the saw is not absolutely razor sharp, when you start feeding it through here, it's going to have more resistance to actually pick up. So, and you can, you can see, of course, that not only does it want to pick up because it's going up this ramp of the blade, but it wants to pick up because this blade here is, is lifting in the back. So the back side of this blade is turning this way, so it's always lifting. And the certain right length of piece of wood is going to give it a lot of leverage to throw that up really good. Now, ironically, a shorter piece and or a much longer piece, you would have less problem with that. But just especially a piece about this long, and that's about how long it looks like it was in the picture, That's going to be just about the perfect storm for this thing wanting to pick this up and throw it right back at you. Not only that, but you know the fact that the blade probably wasn't the sharpest. So it, be, it you know at this point here, it's pulling down. So it's so the first part of the cut is no problem at all. Once you get past center, though, it's now starting to lift, and it's starting to ride up on these teeth here as you're going across this blade. So. Anyway, it's going to pick this up and throw it back at you. You notice here, by the way, there's a couple of things that I do to help with safety. I have a zero cut insert in there and I made it out of plywood and I put the adjusting screws in there so I can adjust it to the height of my table. But you know, that way nothing can fall down in this crack and, and get pinched and throw back out also. 
So, you know, I like to keep a zero cut in my saw at all times. I only put the uh, regular insert in there when I want to do a 45. You can't turn your saw 45 when you have a zero cut in there. It won't work. My theory on how, he, how that happened was just exactly like you're seeing there. It rides up and throws this, and then throws this thing right back into your hand, right here. It just throws it, throws it right back at you. And it does it so fast and so violent and so hard that you have no time to react whatsoever. So how could you have avoided that? I don't have it set up to do this right now because that's not my charge in life. In fact, I don't cut very much on a table saw. I'll be very, very honest with you. I use table saws quite a bit, but I, in my business of building musical instruments, I rarely use a table saw. I use a bandsaw much, much, much more. Like 99% of the time I'm using a bandsaw. So I don't deal with these specific issues too much on the table saw at least during my normal course of business, which is building and repairing musical instruments. But one of the things you could do would be to have a long push stick that would, like if you, you know, it, that would help hold down this once you get into the saw, that it will keep pressing this piece down as you're pushing it through. So a long push stick that could, that had, even if it had two handles on it, would even be good. Another option is to put a feather board, clamp a feather board right here, or some kind of a board that, could, that will keep this from lifting up. You could actually clamp a small board here, and it doesn't have to press hard against this, it just has to be there, or even just a clamp to keep it from lifting up. It can't lift up if there's something there holding it down. It doesn't even have to be tight, just anything right there and you could just you know, push under it and then the saw can't lift the board up. That would be a big help. And you could have a push stick then to push it through. And then you, know, you should have some way of controlling it as it feeds out also. Um, again, sometimes the guards make it difficult sometimes to control it when it's coming out the backside. So, but then again, some of those guards are good in that they can help this problem too. You know, they can keep things from picking up. Some, some guards are designed in such a way that they help that. And also some guards are designed in such a way that they don't let things kick back out. So especially if you have a guard that is designed in that manner, I did not, but if you have a guard that's designed in a manner to keep things from kicking back, you definitely should keep that guard. One more thing that can happen on this, rather than lifting it up and throwing it back, is it can just fire it straight back like an arrow. In other words, it can be flat on the table like this, and this off-cut piece can just come shooting back out just exactly like an arrow. So you never, and I mean never, want to be standing directly behind this where it can come and hit you. You always want to be standing off to the side when you're doing something like this. And whatever side is the most comfortable and that you can see what you're doing the best and watch your hands the best, but you always want to be off to the side. You never want to be directly behind your work going through the saw. Never. Because it will get you eventually if you do that. The other thing is you just want to think about how, you know, how to handle that piece that's being sawn off, especially if you're sawing off small pieces. The smaller the piece is, the more dangerous it's going to be because you can't control it as easily. So again, you want to think about that very much every single time you use a saw. One of the other things, when I'm using a saw like this, I'll, and if, if I have to do something with my hands that even sort of get close to the blade, I always try to make sure that my hand is anchored on this side of the fence so that I can't let my hand go that way. In other words, my fingers are going to keep it from going that way if I have to do something like that. Occasionally, and I can't think of a specific reason, but occasionally things like that occur in the shop. And I always think about that on any power tool. I always try to think, how could I anchor my hand so it can't move towards the cutting edge of anything? Joiner would be another example. When I'm pushing things through the joiner, I try to make sure that my hand is maybe locked on the back side of the fence so that I can't accidentally slip and go down into the joiner. Any kind of thought ahead of time 
is a good thought if, you, if you're thinking in terms of safety. That's about all I can tell you on it. Uh, that's the way I suppose that the accident happened, and I hope it makes some sense for you. I'm going to move over to the bandsaw, and I'm going to show you one more real safety issue that happens on bandsaws, and happens all the time. Once again, I'm not going to power this on. I'm just going to explain what I think is the most dangerous thing about a bandsaw. First of all, the main thing about a bandsaw is you don't really see anything going on. It looks like it's just standing there, kind of harmless-like. The blade, you, you hear the noise, of course, and there's a little vibration, perhaps, but the blade itself is just going straight down, and it's a small, thin blade, and you don't really perceive much motion. So in your mind, you're kind of relaxed, thinking this is an easy saw to use. When in fact, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, it's probably the most dangerous tool in the shop. Why do I say that? Well, it's because people start to relax, especially if they're doing repetitive things. And they start just running things through the saw, running things through the saw, whatever. And what happens is you start getting loose and you start pushing with your thumb and bingo, it pushes right through and you cut your thumb right off. And it happens to people all the time. I was explaining this to my daughter one night in the shop, and I just so happened, I happened to have a customer in the shop while I was explaining that safety thing to my daughter, and he holds up his hand, and he's missing his thumb, and he says, young lady, he's not lying to you. That's exactly what happened to me. So I'm telling you, this is a very big safety concern right here. It's because you don't see a lot of motion going on, and you're pushing with your thumb never get anything in line with that blade. I mean, never. And think about it every single time you power the saw on. Think about the fact that that thing wants to cut your finger off. I mean, that's exactly what it's there for. It's there to cut your finger off. So be sure you think about that and that you do the exact opposite and don't allow that to happen. You know, think about it all the time. So be sure you're always safety conscious on any power tool and think about how can this thing get you. Let me show you one more safety thing that happens quite often and it's, it's much more dangerous than you think and that's the drill press. Okay, we're at the drill press and I'm just going to show you one more safety thing that happens a lot on drill presses. Drill presses are relatively benign except under certain circumstances and under those circumstances they can wreck your whole day. You know it's a spinning action and you're not too likely to, to drill a hole through your finger because I mean you're in control of that and most people are thinking about that and they know they don't want to put their hand under a drill bit obviously so it's it's not too dangerous from that aspect though it's possible anything's possible. But where it is dangerous is the spinning motion. And if you're drilling through something that can catch and start spinning, that spinning can hit you and cut your fingers off or trap your finger like this and cut your finger off. I mean, there are ways this thing can still remove a digit. Trust me, it can happen. Or it can at least cut you badly. Now, I have a piece of wood here as my example, but let's say you're drilling through sheet metal or a piece of flat stock, flat bar metal. Metal is far more dangerous, but wood can hurt you too, trust me. Especially if this spins and you got your finger in this crack by some you know, accident and it cuts like that, it's gonna hurt really badly. My point is that like when you get it down in there like this and this blade is spinning, Look what happens. The, you know, it wants to spin the whole workpiece. Okay? All right, so there's a, the thing about this is it's, it's very easily avoided. Whatever the workpiece is that could potentially spin, there's a very simple solution to it. And I'll show you what that is. Anytime something can spin, all you have to do is get on the. Um, you just want to get on this side of it here because your blade is rotating this way, so you want to get on the. On the, on the back side of that rotation, and, and all you gotta do is just put something like a clamp there. And, and this clamp, could you, you just clamp it right there. Now you can drill your hole, you can still got plenty of room to maneuver this thing and, and, and drill your hole wherever you wanna drill your hole, but when, it, when this thing starts spinning, it can't rotate because your clamp is there. It just can't. 
So that's a real good way, just a very simple way, to avoid anything spinning out of control. It works with metal, it works with wood. You can just take a pair of vice grips, and welding vice grips or regular vice grips, and just clamp them on the edge here. Anything that will catch that edge and keep it from spinning. Well, my friends, as controversial as the safety topic is, it's very important. And as I said before, you can choose to take it for what it's worth, or you can choose to pick it apart and find all kinds of things. By the way, this was not meant to be all-inclusive. You know, not at all. There are many, 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 many more safety aspects to every tool, and you should read and learn and understand about that before you take on using a tool. Just like when Caleb, my apprentice, was here, and he honestly didn't know how to use any of the tools when he got here. None of them. So that was the big focus. Every time he started to use a new tool, I tried to explain to him how that tool was going to remove his digits. And that's the thing you should focus on, is what's it going to do to hurt me? And if you focus on that, and you always think about that, then you will probably never have a shop accident. It can happen to anybody. I am not immune. I am not saying I'm above it. Uh, it could happen to me in the next five minutes. What, just one more real life example that I want to throw out at you was Ron, the fellow who makes my deer antler saddles for the mandolins. Uh, I taught him how to build those. And one day, he, you know, and, and a lot of that is done on the bandsaw. And I always have safety discussions with anybody using my tools. And I told him, I said, Ron, I, you know, I know you use a bandsaw a lot, but I just have to say this. I feel like the bandsaw is the one where most accidents happen in the shop. I said, I know the table saw is responsible for really bad accidents and probably more accidents, but the bandsaw has its share of accidents. And the big thing is that it likes to cut your finger off when you start pushing something through the saw. And I just wanted to make sure he knew that. I know he is very experienced woodworker and I know he has his own bandsaw, but in my shop, it's my rules, and so I said that to him. He's, he kind of blew it off, and you can kind of tell. He, he thought, yeah, well, I don't kind of really agree with that. I'm not making this up to you. I promise you this is true, and Ron's going to see this video, so, you know, I couldn't lie about it if I wanted to. And that is that the very next day that I saw him, he goes, you know what? He said, I did exactly what you said, and I put my... Uh, you know, it, and, it, and it nicked me. It said it didn't cut it off, but it, it definitely put a little cut there and I had to use a Band-Aid. So there you go. The very next day it happened to him. So my point is pay attention. Every single power tool in the shop, even the little Dremel tool I use, wants to hurt you. <laughs> Every one of them does. They don't have a conscience. They don't think about your feelings. <laughs> I at least still have all my digits at this moment. It, five minutes from now, that may not be true. I don't claim any particular expertise. I just do know how these things can hurt you. I've been using power tools since I was a very, very small child. I started using a grinder when I was in the fourth grade. So I do have a little bit of experience. I do understand power tools. I've been using them my whole life. That's all I got to say about it. Go ahead and knock yourself out in the comments. <laughs> have a good day. I'll see you on the next video. Yeah.